when any patient with non-small cell lung cancer presents, the important thing to do is to stage them, and that really is to try and figure out how far the cancer is spread around their body. Uh, at least in our practice, and in many places in the United States, and in the NCCN guidelines, that would include an MRI of the brain with contrast and a PET-CT scan. What you're really looking for is you know, is it stage one, two, three, four? And you're trying to use that information to determine how you're going to treat the patient. If there are areas that are lighting up on the scan and you're not certain, then you'd actually seek a tissue-based diagnosis to surgically stage someone. For many years, the treatment of stage three disease, so that's a cancer which is spread to involve lymph nodes in the middle of the chest in the mediastinum, either on the same side as the cancer, so that's N2 disease, or on the opposite side, that's N3 disease, um, has involved some aspects of chemotherapy and radiotherapy that used to be given sequentially. So you would start with radiotherapy and then add in chemotherapy at the end or induction chemotherapy and then radiotherapy. But over the last 20 years or so, the concept of combination chemoradiotherapy has really been defined as the, the best approach in patients who can tolerate that. There's no doubt it increases the toxicity. Given that concurrent chemoradiotherapy to date has got the best outcome compared to sequential therapy, unless the patient is really very frail, I would pursue a combination chemoradiotherapy approach. And I think what's improved over the last few years is the tolerability of the chemotherapy because of supportive medication and our ability to target the radiation in a much more effective way such that the, the effects on normal tissues is reduced. In some of the big guideline panels, you realize that if you get enough doctors in the room, you'll get multiple different opinions. So people have preferences. They like to induce with chemotherapy or go for chemoradiotherapy and then surgery or just definitive chemoradiotherapy up front. Nobody really knows. At least in our practice, we tend, if we're not going for trimodality therapy, to just go for chemoradiotherapy from the get-go. The only advantage of doing induction chemotherapy is if you shrink the tumor, will you reduce the size of the radiotherapy field and will that matter? The only reason it might matter is if, for example, in a large tumor, do you have a particularly large dose to the lungs, and could you lessen that and make it safer to give if you shrank it down with chemotherapy? But for most people, chemoradiotherapy from the get-go is usually what happens.